Good guys. And g'day Alan. Uh, I'm just looking over that tune file you sent me. And for the other guys, I'm looking over Alan's tune file that he sent me. Um, so sometimes we call it a, a map. I actually really like the term tune profile. Um, map gets too confusing when you're looking at fuel maps or timing maps, um, ignition map, map sensor, boost control, boost adjustment, or boost compensation map. So instead of calling the whole thing a map, I'm, I'm going to call it a tune profile. Anyway, uh, Alan's working on his idle speed. Now he has fitted his map sensor. And funnily enough, once we'd found that and fitted the map sensor, the vehicle, the engine starts and runs. So that was uh, really good progress. I grabbed his timing map and I said some things in an email the other day. And it uh, doesn't always come across right when you're just writing it, looking at it. Sometimes it's nice to see it. Uh, so I talked about the integral gain and the dead band. Oh, there's stuff in my chin. I was just having dinner. Um, and those are only available on closed loop. Um, so we go through the, the open loop settings. And when you're learning, it's best to set it on the open loop. Um, the problem being, though, you don't see like the target that you're aiming for where you do on closed loop um, so of these numbers are all pretty good the TPS lockout I often start about 1.5 but I will change that and I'll try to get a bit lower about so 0.8 is good once it's set and run just watch if there's any movement in that TPS and the TPS so that that's the the number when it goes above 1.5 percent or 0.8 of a percent TPS, the idle speed stops working. And the reason we do that um, is so that when you're cruising on light throttle, the idle speed isn't trying to come in and out and give you like a cruise control. Or it's opening up because um, it's too high. So let's say you're cruising at 1200 RPM on really light throttle. And, the, and if it's in, was in, in a closed loop with a computer trying to adjust, the idle speed um, would be, hey, you, you're, too, you're too high. It's trying to say target 800 and it's at 1200. So it's going to close the idle speed control unit. So when you back off the throttle, it's going to stall. Okay, so that isn't ideal. So that's why we want to have that number quite low. RPM lockout is, is kind of similar to the TPS lockout. It's... If you're 800 above your target, then the idle speed control stops working. Um, I would probably want it to about, be about four to 500 would be normal. That would be where I'd be happy. Um, you've got some stuff here. Idle actuator. Um, this is your dash plot is interesting. Uh, that's like your anti-stall. Uh, we've got some TPS clamp. So when the oh, AC, some AC offset. So that's when the uh, um, air conditioning comes in, and it, it'll idle, bring it up a little bit. Um, have we got in here? <coughs> okay, in closed, no, in open loop, the AC will just be added to the the base setting. In closed loop, it's different. And start up. So this is like their flare when you start it up, and I would actually expect it to be end up more like this. Three, four, five, five. It would be just an estimation of what it might be like, and that'll give you a little bit more of a, a step on cold start, or and, and warm start on startup. Now we're going to go down here. So there's. The numbers that Alan's used and it's all 15 so what we're looking at and I suspect what he's got is, is at 70 to 80 it idles really nice at 15 what I'm going to do uh, let's fire up no oh, no let's just uh, I'm gonna fire for a second map just hold there I'll grab a second one of my maps 
right here's one of my tables and it's, it's almost similar uh, we've got at warm idle we're at 18 on those numbers and then as we drop in temperature so the temperatures along the top it goes 18 20 and it goes 23 uh, 26 25 25 25 and probably because I, I didn't set it in there that's probably not the best one to use is it let's see if I can find a better one and I found a good one so this one around the 80 degrees is at 16 then it increases because we want it to idle higher um, when it's colder so I go 17 17 18 19 21 22 24 25 25 29. probably because I haven't set down there and she just put some numbers in because we we don't often get that cold like minus 10 is isn't very common here and where I am in New Zealand at all and so that's giving me um, a slight increase in idle if I go over here and I go to idle speed target table you see this one is aiming for 800 it actually increases um, at 110 I've actually increased the idle speed a little bit so if it starts idling a lot fast when it's warm maybe the temperature might be getting a bit warm we go 950,000 and I just go up in 50, 50 RPM increments up to about 1200 so I'm keeping it reasonably low for my idle speed um, a lot of factory vehicles go a lot higher than that but it was the increases in the target table is really what I was wanting to show Alan. so it is going to be something similar to that I can actually even just grab this and I can export it like this uh, to a clipboard and I can pop over here that's Alan's I can pop that in there uh, import from a clipboard bugger I only got the one number I needed to get the whole table <coughs> and this is because I brought it in from a G4 plus platform not a G4X platform if I do this and I give it some parameters the top one will be engine temp and we get temperature ECT bam and initialize the axis it's much better and we push okie dokie and bam the table just appears so I pop that table into Allen's um, now has it still on closed loop so no it's on open loop so it's just it goes to that number it runs the idle speed to 16 say when it's at oh, it's at 80 this one's going to 17 and it, that's the number of steps or the, the duty, duty cycle that fires out and it stops there so if we go here and we turn the open loop to closed loop closed loop we push ok I do not want to set them all the values to zero okay and we go over here and we now have a target table and of course this target table does not match the target table for the one I was trying to use but it's not a bad table you see it's at warm about 850 and it ramps up to 1200 1250 so it's not a bad target table to monitor it we go tuning runtime values oh, auxiliary functions right there so here it is here's it'll bring up the target to bring up the idle position at the moment um, the idle target is zero because the engine isn't running because I'm in my lounge um, <laughs> idle position is at 15 and then the idle status is locked out at the moment and then it'll give you the error 
the gap between where it is and where it wants to be. And if we go over here, uh, no, it's an actuator. Actuator. Um, if we look at a previous tune of Allen's, uh, which is here. Oh, well, this is someone else's. I'm just going to open Allen's other one. It's a downloaded one. Let's go back to this one. Map truck one, truck two. This see this base idle position is probably a better one because it does have some graduation in it. And we go to auto speed control. We go here. I'll change it to closed loop. And no, I do not want to set them to zero. And we come down to idle actuator. Idle actuator. And we're going to scroll down here. And it's got this number here. Integral gain. Um, at 30, that idle speed is going to go really fast. So the faster, the higher that is, the faster the idle speed will try to adjust. And then it's trying to get to a dead band of zero. So the dead band is um, the, the number of RPM higher or lower than your target. So if you're targeting, say, 800, at the moment it's going to get to 800. And then because it's trying to adjust so fast, it's going to go... 800 and it's going to try to adjust it and it's going to go 850 or 900 and it's going to go no it's too high and it's going to bring it back down and it's going to get close to 800 but it's going to go past that so it's going to go like 700 and then it's going to go back up again then down again and up again and up and down and up and down so that's not going to work start off 50 is a really good number when you're finished 30 is a really good number integral gain oh what is this you do have a help menu, and you've got this help menu up here. Uh, let's try one. One is a really good number to start with. Okay, two is quite high. 0.5 is quite low. One's a good starting point. If you want it faster or slower, you can adjust it. This max clamp, 95. When you're talking to the numbers in your idle speed. You may find 95 actually ends up really, really high, so you can actually bring that down. Min clamp, 5 to 10 is good. Here's your IC idle up. <coughs> so that is if you want your AC to be higher than your target, you put it there. So at the present, it's trying to have the same, but it might go 25, 30, 50, so just that allows it to, to to have a slightly higher idle than what you'd see originally. You can use that, guys, if you're doing winching. You want a higher idle for something, put it on a digital input, call it AC, bam, it gives you more idle. And you can adjust it with this, this one here. And then you just uh, adjust these ones to suit your conditions. So what I would normally do, uh, I would set my targets. Uh, again, there's not a whole table because I turn it on. So you've got to check you've got that right. If you've got it just a single zone like that, it's not going to give you results. Set your axis. Parameter. It's an ECT. It's an analog input. It's a temperature. It's an ECT. Okay. Initialize the axis. We'll bring it up to where we want. Or you can tap these numbers in yourself if you want it, if you want to change it. Push OK. And voila, they're all zero. Oh, that isn't going to work, is it? So we've got to go through and tap the numbers up. And these, I know this is, can be a bit boring, but it's showing. Some of the pitfalls when you're setting up your idle speed, because we are really doing this right now. I'm just going through this map, looking at it. Um, it's the real stuff that we see when we when, we, when we're doing this. So anyway, we've got Alan's. Uh, there's some reasonable numbers. He probably wants it a little bit lower. He will set them the way he wants. 
Um, there's some startup ideas. It's and if it's too high or too low, you can adjust it. Um, one other thing you can do, and I know I've tapped out a lot of things right now, is you can leave that at zero for the moment. You can leave this at zero at the moment. Um, and then you can set these numbers. You can get these numbers um, using up here uh, tuning runtime. I just do it in closed loop, and I, I watch the it he, heating up. And when the when it's right in the middle of that zone like that, I'll put that number into that number, and I'll look at it and go, um, "How much are we changing?" And I I actually sort of tune ahead, and as it drops and as it changes, to try and um, because as it as it's partway, say it's here at twenty five. And then that's a 25, so it's going to do an average of those two, as it's sitting like here. When it's over here, there's most of it's 25, and I'll show an example here. We'll, it, we'll tap in. Let's tap in uh, 10. <coughs> so we're at 25, and as this zone moves over, it, it'll get more and more into that 10 area. And it'll be causing massive fluctuations in the idle and that's why you want it to be reasonably graduated as you go through the numbers so i would come in and you know, i might tap 24 look at this number down here watch it adjust bring it up to where we need it to be i'm going to save this um now i think alan's going to go through that pretty well i think he's going to be able to watch this video pretty quick Hope that's been helpful. Uh, this is a paid service. So if you've got a 1UZ and you need a hand sorting out some setup, um, I can help out with that. I only do 1UZs. I've given up on doing this. I'm just like, nah, I'm not so much bothered. I just pretty much do the 1UZ help help uh, assistance at the moment. We'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.